afternoon, everyone. I'm Yi Chi from National Taiwan University. I'm happy to be here today to present our work, H1, Effective Alphanumeric Character Output Using the Risk One Tactile Display. In other words, we, ne we enable alphanumeric communications on a risk one tactile display, which is only a two times two vibro tactile array. On such a two times two array, we displayed letters and digits using multi stroke edge right patterns, which only consists only nine segments. For example, letter B, letter K, and digit A. This is a short animation that demonstrates how H5 actually works. Take letter B as an example. The corner points vibrate in a certain sequence so that the users can interpret the character. All these patterns are easy to learn, expressive, and reliable to recognize. Today, I want to quickly go through the motivation and the main idea of our work first. Since the wearable device keeps in contact with human skin, it has been years for researchers wondering how do we deliver expressive messages through human's haptic channel. And many previous work have been introduced to tackle this problem. The most basic form is a single vibrator, using reasons to represent different meanings. Also, adapting vibrotactile array to create continuous pattern is a common approach. For example, you can draw straight lines on 3x3 three three or 4x4 four four arrays. More recently, researchers have introduced tactile display based on skin stretch to deliver even more smoother and subtle patterns. Viewing the history of building tactile display, we can see the trend of increasing resolution for generating more complicated patterns on such high-density displays. Yes, it seems a reasonable approach because if we can create more complicated patterns, we can potentially deliver more expressive and intuitive messages, such as English letters and digits. However, as the pattern gets more complicated, the more difficult for humans to recognize them, because the tactile perception of forearm is quite limited. In previous work, studies showed the recognition rates are unstable for users to identify 12 patterns that include straight lines and curves. Moreover, it showed no clear principles of how to generate even more expressive and also recognizable patterns. It seems that pursuing higher resolution of tactile display is in fact conflicting with maintaining recognition rates. Above discussion leads to the research problem. How do we effectively display alphanumeric characters on the wrist? So, we present H5, a set of multi-stroke patterns for a low resolution, two signs two array. Through a series of user studies, we conclude the guidelines of dividing H5 patterns into multi-strokes for displaying letters and digits effectively. As a short animation, demonstrating how it works. It vibrates a three vibration stroke first, then a two vibration stroke next. In the evaluation, the performance of H5 is 86% on letters and 89% on digits. That's basically the introduction of this paper. In the remaining of my presentation, I will go through user studies, design principles, evaluation, and discussion in details. The first session is user study. We use the same apparatus through the studies, a three times three and two times two configuration. We determine the duration of the vibration and the gap between vibration by a pilot test. We only recruited right-handed participants. All the tasks were identifying special patterns and each study was no longer than 60 minutes. The procedures were also identical through every study. First, there is a 15-minute learning phase for participants learning the writing of edge write. Second, there will be a training phase for them to get familiar with the tactile patterns. And last, the actual testing will be conducted. 
The user study was designed to answer the research problem step by step. First, we want to investigate the optimal resolution of a wrist one tactile display. Does a higher resolution actually bring a better form performance, or a lower one can bring higher accuracy? We conduct this study one to answer this question. Two resolutions, three times three and two times two, are chosen to represent two different strategies, which are smooth line on high resolution array and more discrete line on a low resolution array. We want to understand which strategy brings better performance on recognizing straight lines, and 12 participants were recruited. In the study, every possible corner-to-corner -corner straight lines were tested. The result showed significant difference between two recognition rates, and the two signs to layout has better accuracy. In addition, a straight line displayed on a two signs to layout requires shorter time than the other one. To summarize, a two signs to layout outperforms in both recognition rates and rendering efficiency. After we reduce the resolution, we decided to display edge right patterns on such two times two layout. Edge right is a system of unistroke patterns that represents characters through a sequence of corner points on a square so that each pattern consists in only straight and diagonal strokes. Previous studies show that edge right can be learned in about 15 minutes, which is comparable to the time needed to learn graffiti. Moreover, its stroke-based representation is more comfortable with two times two layout. However, rendering edge right has one potential problem. Different lengths of, le different lengths of patterns might lead to different cognitive load. Thus, not all the patterns are easy to recognize. For example, recognizing letter I might be much easier than recognizing letter W, since W contains more vibration, and also W takes longer time to be rendered. We suppose there will be a recognizable lens that pattern can be recognized effectively. In order to investigate such lens, we conduct this study too. In this study, we display all the alpha numeric patterns on the two times two tactile display. 24 participants were recruited and assigned evenly into the two groups. The overall recognition rates of letters and digits are around 71 and 79 percent, respectively. To further analyze the relation between recognition rates and the lens, we categorize the patterns based on the vibration counts. Letter I and letter Q were first removed from analyzed because they contain unique vibration counts, thus they are very easy to be distinguished from others. After that, a repeating major ANOVA shows among patterns with vibration counts from three to five. Vibration count three has significantly higher recognition rates than others. These results show that the recognizable length of HRI pattern is three, which leads to the conclusion that each pattern has more than three vibration has to be divided into multi-stroke one, so that every stroke can be clearly recognized. However, up to this point, we still have no idea how to divide any pattern. Take letter B as example. We know that both two vibration and three, two vibration and three vibration patterns are recognizable. There are a few possible segmentations. In the last study, we tried to determine the optimal segmentation for each pattern. By comparing the recognition rates of two and three vibration patterns, 12 participants were recruited from, for this study and results shows that two vibration patterns and three vibration patterns have similar recognition rates. However, judging a rendering efficiency, three vibration patterns are more efficient in stroke numbers, thus they are more preferable. Here, I will briefly conclude the findings. Three studies were designed to answer the big research question, how do we effectively display alphanumeric patterns on the wrist? In the first study, we compared two resolutions, and the result showed that two times two configuration benefits in recognition rates and efficiency. After that, we display all the edge right patterns to obtain the recognizable length, which is three. 
And we also understand optimal strategy of segmenting a pattern that is applying as many three vibration strokes as possible. This finding leads us to the design principles. Principle number one, we prefer to use three vibration strokes. Number two, include two vibration strokes if a pattern can be totally divided into three vibration patterns. Finally, delimiter is important in multi-stroke design to indicate the end of any character. We chose a short vibration at the right down corner as the delimiter. Because there's no characters in edge right begins in the right down corner, it's easy to recognize. Based on the design principle, we then divide patterns with more than three vibrations. Take letter B as an example. It's a three vibration stroke plus a two vibration stroke. And these are the whole set of the derived HY patterns. We conducted two additional user studies to evaluate HY, which are single characters and two character messages. The procedure is similar to the previous studies. However, before the actual testing, what participants learn is the original HY patterns, not the modified one. In the evaluation one, HY has accuracies of 86 and 89% for letters and digits, respectively, which are both significantly better than the original edge right ones. In the evaluation two, we tested two character messages, that's a combination of a letter and a digit, which are more expressive than single characters. We selectively tested the easiest and the hardest subset of letters combined with digits the result of accuracy is 89 and 83% respectively. So we expect any combination of letters and digits will fall in the range of the accuracy. Discussion. Let's talk about limitation, possible applications, and future works. The major limitation of our work is that users may easily confuse with the di diagonal strokes and the vertical strokes because of the limitation of human skin sensory. This confusion brings a problem that several pairs of patterns may easy to be confused with each other. Because these pairs are different in merely one line, if the user can, tell, can, if the user can tell the red stroke clearly, it's possible for them to misrecognize to the other one. A possible solution is to fix the ambiguity by creating more differential patterns, which may not be the same with the original HRI patterns. Secondly, let's talk about possible applications. First of all, HRI enables rich and private communication. For example, if you are in a meeting and Uber is coming to pick you up, HRI can secretly remind you, U5, that means Uber is coming in five minutes, so you know when to end the conversation. Second, HVI can provide more informative notification to help the users making decisions. For example, if you are a Pokemon Go player like me, you may have a watch that vibrates each time the Pokemon is around. Imagine that you have HVI. You can easily know that the Pokemon you bump into is a common Pokemon such as Rotata or Piggy, or a real Pokemon like Pikachu or Snorlax you should better catch them all. More advanced in information like CP or IV values can also be provided. Finally, let's talk about future works. Currently, because each vibration of each vibe lasts 500 milliseconds, it takes approximately three seconds to display a pattern. To enhance, to enhance time efficiency, one possible approach is to adapt faster vibrators with shorter response time. On the other hand, the performance of edge vibe is measured in the wheel control environment. Participants only took one task and remained the same hand postures through the studies. We encourage future research to investigate the performance of edge vibe in a more real world environment. Finally, we come to the conclusion of our work. We try to answer the question how do we effectively deliver alphanumeric patterns on a wristwatch tactile display? Our answer is H5, 
a set of multistroke patterns that is intuitive, expressive, and recognizable. We also provide the baseline performance in the evaluation. Three studies were conducted to investigate the key issues of tactile display and reveal the possibilities of multistroke patterns display on a low resolution array. The design principles of our work can be served as guidelines for future research to de develop other effective patterns. We hope our research can inspire future works to explore more possibilities of rich communication using wearable tactile displays. Thank you for your attention. Uh, questions from audience. Please introduce yourself. We have seen questions. Thank you. James Landay from Stanford University. Um, so the results are still really impressive, and the idea is also. I'm curious of whether you've had much use of this in more naturalistic settings, because we find when doing vibration that if you're talking to someone or doing something else, it's actually hard to pick up the vibrations appropriately. So I'm wondering, will this really work in a, a regular environment versus a more test situation? Uh, um, uh, actually, I don't have uh, a number of accuracies in a real world environment now. Um, I suppose the recognition rates will drop uh, in a multitask uh, environment. Um, but currently, um, HY provides a stable recognition rate. Um, we hope future work can um, uh, continue uh, exploring in a real world environment. Any other question? Hello, hi. Akar Gupta, University of Toronto. Um, so you mostly explored uh, vibrations that were discrete on the skin. I'm guessing, uh, for example, 500 milliseconds for the first one and then 500 for the second yes. one. But did you also explore the possibility of continuous tactile vibrations on the skin, possibly using tactile illusions like apparent motion or phantom sensations? Uh, you mean uh, if the, the vibration is continuous? Yeah, you, don't, you don't feel discrete vibrations, okay. but you feel a single vibration on the skin which basically it generates the same pattern on uh, the skin? Um, actually, in a pilot test, uh, we found that a, a, a gap between vibrations, for example, 100 milliseconds, will help uh, users to uh, clearly identify different points. And identifying different points clearly can make the accuracies uh, better. So I think uh, that is necessary to be discrete. OK, thanks. Hi, uh, Roshan from uh, Keo University. Hi. Yeah, uh, so how important is the, nice work by the way, uh, how important is the vibrotactile modules to be in contact with the skin? Can it be mounted inside the watch, uh, like in a commercial application? Uh, because if you have four vibrotactile modules inside a watch and then you vibrate one, then the whole watch tends to vibrate. So did you... Uh, come across uh, this uh, situation? Uh, you mean uh, how, how, do, how do we put four vibrators in a smartwatch? In, inside a, a solid smartwatch and, yeah. Okay. I, I think it's quite difficult to put uh, four, uh, uh, four vibrators uh, inside a smartwatch, but I think there's a possible way to put it outside. Um, actually, current, uh, I saw a product uh, very recently, it called Moment. Um, it used two times to lay out, and maybe you can search that on the internet. It puts, uh, the startup puts vibrator outside the watch and creates clear vibration. Okay, so thank you, Ichi. Let's start Ichi again.